place to be today because we have air conditioning. Yay! That is all I have to say about that. Whoop, whoop. <clears throat> it is going to be a hot one every day this week. So yeah. make sure that you are prepared for the heat wave coming. Uh, but we are in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen. We're here to worship him. We want to get a few announcements out of the way. So we're going to start with our memory verse uh, for the month. It is, uh, the theme is creativity, using your imagination to do something new. How many of you love doing new things? Yeah. Oh, really? A few of you. I love that. That's awesome. Normally, people are like, mm, yeah, you know, or they'll say, yes, I am. And you're like, okay, well, let's go bungee jumping. And they're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Anyway, Jessica, our infamous, <laughs> notorious J-E-S-S is here to do our memory verse. She has some motions that she's going to lead us in. So let's do our memory verse. Here we go. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Ephesians 2.10. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. <coughs> School supplies are needed. We're needing backpacks. I see that Holly brought some backpacks in today. If you would like to help out with school supplies, then we could use some backpacks for both boys and girls. And we appreciate that. If you want to um, adopt a child and buy clothing for them, it's $150. And you can certainly adopt a child if you would like to do that. See Jessica for more details. Let's see, what else? Oh, Silver Falls. This Saturday coming up is our day trip to Silver Falls. There's a sign-up sheet on the back table. If you want to go to Silver Falls, then sign up. We're going to leave the church at 10 a.m. Bring your own picnic lunch. Yes, my dear. Um, it's not a bad, where's John? It's not a bad hike. It's only about what? How long did it take to get to the falls? From here driving? No, no, to the, from the hike. So, it, yeah, From the and it's not a bad, like, hike. It's, like, kind of a, like that. So it, it's doable. It's it, very doable. It is beautiful. I'll tell you, one fall, you walk behind the fall. You yeah, you get to walk behind it. It is pretty cool. Can you hear it? And it's a, it would be a good day for a motorcycle ride, too, if you wanted to follow up on your motorcycle. Can you hear the falls? Yes. Uh, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's um, in Oregon. Yeah, Silver Falls. All right. Let's see what other announcements. The Dahlia Festival is the following Saturday. We're going to leave here at 10 a.m. We're keeping everything at 10 a.m. so you don't forget 10 a.m., 10 a.m., 10 a.m. So there's a sign-up sheet for that as well. All right. Let's wait right here. <clears throat> so look at that stud muffin up there. Barbecue competition for the first time ever. John Wheeler won it. Yeah, he finally gets his name on the plaque. It was not rigged because I was not even a judge. Not only that, but I didn't even know what he made until after he won. What so he he, made, he, uh, he won from some barbecue ribs. So he he did a good job. So let's hear it for John. Gavin, hold it right there. Don't go anywhere. So we also had a cornhole competition. Don't click yet. Now, there, Tani gave me some notes here. She said, this is the cornhole tournament highlights. I don't know about highlights, but there's something. The <laughs> shortest game lasted five minutes. <clears throat> and that was me and my dad, yes. Now, I said to Tani, there should be another prize that did not get mentioned, and that is we were the only team to get zero points. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that is something to brag about. So, no one else could do that. That is hard, right? Anyway, the long, oh, so that was a five-minute game. The longest game, one hour. <laughs> Joe and Janet against Robin and Katie. And let me tell you, 
That game lasted a long time. <laughs> Giving their all, putting in a hearty competition to earn an opportunity for these three different places. Let's start with third place, but hold on. Yeah, well, that's okay. Bob and Scott fought a tough uh, first place bracket. They did win. They earned their spot for either first, second, or third, but they had an emergency and they had to leave. So... Gavin and Tina stepped in for them, and they took home third place. Let's hear Gavin and Tina. They are the bronze winners. Then Paul and Matt, they're not even here today. I tried talking smack talk to Matt, and I, two minutes later, I had lost the game. So they came in at second place, Matt and Paul. Woo! And finally... Tim and Jerry took everybody out. They came in first place and they scored a million points. It was amazing. It was like three point, three point, three point. You guys are out. It was amazing. So thank you everyone who participated. Tim and Jerry, my dad and I are not coming for you next year. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're gonna pra okay. There you go. We're practicing. We're gonna we're gonna have a rematch. And thank, you for Tanny. thank you, Tanny, for organizing that. That's not easy to do. We really appreciate it. She was running around trying to get everything organized. She even made these adorable corn uh, trophies. trophies. They were uh, so cute. So thank you, Tanny. They were corny. They were. That's right. My friend over there came in. There's my friend Mac Harvey with her, her friend Franco. So welcome, you guys. Say hello. Uh, we have a special treat today because uh, y this is Jonathan and Vicky's daughter, in case you didn't. She's grown up so much since last time you saw no. her, right? She's actually an adult now. No. She does adult things. No. It's really creepy. Uh -huh. I don't like it. <laughs> She's still my little girl, though. Aw. Anyway, they're here from uh, Asbury. So remember we talked about what happened at Asbury this last year? They were there. And a special treat for you. Max is going to talk a little bit about it today. So that's coming a little bit later. All right. So before the message, uh, TJ is going to remind me to pray for her son, Colin. They leave for Hawaii tomorrow. Ooh. And uh, Colin... It, 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 there's a real danger with him flying of seizures and, and problems in the air. So, um, but it's on his bucket list. So the family's making it happen, which Good. I think is beautiful. Yeah. So um, we're going to pray for him. Don't let me forget. So if I forget, you guys scream at me, throw stuff at me, whatever you need to do. Pray for those people too. All right. Let's open with a word of prayer and worship the Lord this morning. Father, we are grateful to be in your house and we want to worship you. We want to just spend time in your presence, magnifying, glorifying you, kind of resetting our lives and just focusing and pressing into you. Father, we know that your Holy Spirit is here. We just pray that it would move in this place. We thank you for the joy that we feel when we come into your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Worship the God who loves. We worship the God who lives. We worship the God who never bore with us. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory. There's joy in the house. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord. 
Father, surely in this place, as the Holy Spirit is moving, we're just going to sing of all the goodness that he's given to us. We're going to sing about how we can be a mess. We can be uh, feeling terrible about ourselves. We can be feeling alone and isolated. But he makes all things work together. You may feel like your life is just a mess. How could God do anything with my life? Well, let me tell you something. I've, I've read the Bible, all of it, believe it or not. And there are a lot of people in there who had messed up lives. And God did amazing things. He took all those things that the enemy meant for evil, and he turned them for good. So whatever you've got going on in your life, whatever pain, whatever hurt, whatever heartache, whatever burden, give it to God. Give it to him right now.
Lord, we thank you that you are not finished with us. Yeah, you can clap for him. He's, he's worthy. What? Lord, we thank you that you are not finished with us and that you are a good father who uh, loves to give good things to your children. We pray right now, Lord God, as we sing this last song, that your Holy Spirit would minister to our hearts, that you would just meet us right where we are. Children's Church. Let's line up at the door.
Mackenzie come up and she's going to just share a few words. If you'll just share a little bit about the experience that you had and kind of how it affected you. I know there's still some residual stuff happening, which means it was a real revival because yeah. revivals don't just happen like while it's happening. Right. It goes on, right? Right. So. Perfect. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Okay. I have some notes on my phone, so I'm just going to pull that up. Okay. Oh, I haven't spoken in front of a lot of people in a long time. Oh, this is so weird. Okay. So I'm Mackenzie. Um, I am a sophomore at Asbury, and I was a freshman when the whole like revival happened. We, at, like the students at Asbury, we call it the outpouring um, because we feel it was just an outpouring of God's love and his spirit over us. Um, but other people call it revival. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. I mean, God was still there and working. Um, I, mm, it's a little bit difficult for me to express what happened to me because I was really standoffish towards it all in the very beginning. I wanted to be as far away from it as possible, um, for a couple reasons. One of them being, you know, Asbury has a history of revivals and I was like, oh, it's just one of those again. Like, it's just... You know, there's just going to be people worshiping in the chapel for a little bit, you know. So I was like, this can't be real, like everybody's saying, or how powerful it is. Like, there's no way. And so just because of that knowledge of those revivals happening, I was like, no. Because they've had one in 1972, 1960s, in the 90s, um, and then again in the 2000s. But never to this magnitude. Um Never, N never like this. They had maybe people from other states coming, um, but never from across the world. I met people from Japan, Europe, Australia, um, South America, all over South America, which surprised me a lot because you would think in those very low income places, like how are they going to afford to come here in such a matter of time? But churches got together they raised money they were like we need to be there for this god is doing something we need to be there so that's when i was like mm, this is a little bit different than all the other revivals um another thing that like discouraged me from going was i have a lot of anxiety um even just this is a lot so going into a chapel that was jam packed like kid you not people were like pushing against the walls like standing in the aisleways like everywhere people laying on the floors worshiping all of it and so it was very overwhelming for me to be in a place like that especially in a place that was my home you know because i moved from washington to kentucky to go to school you know so you know being in a place away from home, you kind of have to make yourself home. And so all those people coming into my house, I was like, whoa, this is a lot. This is very um, scary for me. So I didn't want to go in the chapel because of that. And also I had a lot of friends that were like, don't go in there. Like, why would you want to be in there with all of this nonsense? Like people are crazy in there because I've never seen God work how he did there. There was speaking in tongues, but also translators there. There was people just laying on the floor worshiping. There was people praying over other people. There was other people standing in the back waving like flags and dancing. Like there were so many types of worship there. That's, that's how you know it was kind of weird. And like, you know, you never see something like that. You wouldn't see that in a normal church Sunday so like to see all those different types of worship was very eye-opening to me um but after talking to some friends other friends they were like wouldn't this be the Lord's house in heaven like wouldn't there be all these types of worship in heaven so this is how we know this is God's work and this is how we know it's for him and that he's doing something here because you, that's unheard of you know, to see something like that. And so just knowing like in the Bible that it says every tongue, every nation, every tribe, everybody is going to be in heaven. To, so to see an array of people from around the world worshiping in their own ways was another like key indicator. Okay, yeah, 
this is real. This is God working. And so after a little skepticism and like being standoffish towards it all on Saturday, this started on a Wednesday, by the way, I'm not sure if you guys all know how it started. Um, but there was every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, our school has mandatory chapels where each of the students are um, supposed to come. And so during one of our Wednesday chapel services, some kids decided to stay after and continue worshiping because they were like, mm, the spirit is kind of moving in me. I, I need to stay here and see what God wants for me. So I, I think it was about nine students and eight or nine students stayed and started praying and then they never stopped. Mm -hmm. And then more students were like, I need that, I need that. And then when other students were coming out saying, I was just healed of this, or this, or this, or this, people were like, I wanna be in there, I need to go in there, I need to meet God. And so when that started to spread, my generation is kinda cool because we all kinda connect through this. <laughs> and I can talk to anybody in the world through this, and so I, a lot of our kids use that to our advantage and we took videos and we posted it everywhere. Yeah. It was all over Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, all those different social media sites. And once that word got out, people were like, I need to be there. Whatever's happening, I need to be there and I need to be a part of what God's doing because I need that type of healing. So on Saturday, I decided to go in, which was a couple days after Wednesday. Mind you, this lasted about two weeks with like nonstop people in there from all hours of the night. I mean, they were in there at like 3 a.m. worshiping. Um, but I went on there on Saturday and my friend had kind of encouraged me to go in there alone and kind of just sit and observe what was happening because, I mean, if you just dive yourself into it, you're not gonna really fully ex like know what God wants for you. You need to sit back, kind of observe, kind of pray, see what God wants for you there. So I, I did that. Um, and when I got in there, I saw like two of my friends and I was like, okay, that's weird. I mean, I wanna go sit with my friends, but I was just told to go sit alone and like see. <laughs> but I decided to sit with my friends and um, the pastor that was up there talking started talking about addiction and I don't know if you guys know this but our teens and our young adults are struggling like struggling with different addiction pornography drugs alcohol just toxic relationships all those different types of addictions that you can have it's there and they're happening even in a Christian school it's fully there so um, the uh, pastor was talking about that and a girl next to me um, had struggled a lot with alcohol and the buddy next to me had struggled a lot with pornography and um, alcohol. And so it was really interesting, but the pastor said, I want you to turn to the person next to you and I want you to pray over their addiction. Just you by yourself. They don't have to tell you what it is, but just pray over it um, and just sit next to each other. So I, the girl sitting next to me, she's my roommate. So I, she knows that I know about everything. So I was praying with her and the guy next to me, um, he didn't say anything for a minute, but once my friend on the other side started to talk about it, he started to talk about it. You know, he was like, this is what's going on in my life and I need some prayer and I need some healing in this. So we started praying over that and mind you, I thought this was gonna be about me. You know, I was like, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna talk to God about what's happening in my life. But no, I was, I was praying for other people around me. And so, I don't know, I just felt God saying, okay, it's Mackenzie, come talk to me now. So I went up to the altar and I kneeled down and I started praying just like these ones right here that you guys have. And I started singing for a little bit and I began praying, but God wasn't done with me yet because I thought I was done praying and I got up and my knees were so weak that I just like fell again. And that's never happened to me before. I mean, my legs are 
pretty young. I can move and run and I go and work out. So that's not normal for me to just get on the floor and then not be able to stand up again. And so I, <laughs> stupid me, I continued to try to get up and walk and I literally fell and twisted my ankle like right in front of the, um, the altar. But that was like God being like, Mackenzie's just stay just sit and talk to me like why do you have to keep moving from thing to thing stop talk to me have a relationship and and just talk with me for a second and so I I went back to the altar because I that was like going through my head it was like why am I falling like this why are my legs so weak why is this so I went back to the altar and I started to pray again and I was there kid you not two hours (laughs) didn't even know that that time had passed um but I was just so indulged in his presence that it felt like five minutes you know it was like how how is that real how is so when people were like oh the revival was going on for two weeks nonstop. how did that happen i know how it happened because it felt like five minutes when we were in there you know and it was so good that people just wanted to be in there for so long and i i wish i could show pictures but um There's this one picture of a line that goes from the chapel and it goes all the way out to the street and wraps all the way around the university and all the way back to the fields and um, football fields and baseball fields and all that. And there was thousands of people there and so they tried to get people moving in and out of the chapel, but it was so hard because people were like, I don't want to go. I'm not leaving this place. And so um, what people tried to, like our university didn't want to control this in a sense because it wasn't theirs to control. Um, So they tried to back off and man as much as they can, like the chaos, like with like wheelchairs and strollers and things like that for people to get into the chapel. But because Wilmore is such a small town, our plumbing oh, no. blew up. Like it, it was really bad. And we had a lot of plumbing issues because there was just so many people. We had people parking on the grasses. We had people parking in other people's neighborhoods and around, which Kind of is funny because the reason I was a little late to church today was because I had to park around the block and in the neighborhoods. And so I'm like, that's that's why I love this church and why I wanted to come because I know God is doing something good here and and it's powerful. And you guys, your guys' parking lot is filled just like Asbury's was filled, you know? And so my just encouragement from God throughout that whole time was just for him saying to me, just spend time focusing on me. Um, Stop worrying about everybody else. Stop worrying about your anxiety. Stop worrying about what people are saying, what your friends are saying. Stop worrying about the history of Asbury and revivals and like, stop worrying about it. Just focus on me and I got you. Like you're going to be fine. And so that that was just what I took from the outpouring. Um, and I just encourage you guys, like, even if it's, I know people say five minutes out of your day, like, do it because God wants it. Um, even when you're sitting on the toilet, like, I know that sounds so bad. Like, you know, you're sitting there thinking for a minute, just pray to God. Like, sit there and talk to him. Be like, I've had a, a really rough day or I've had an fantastic day like today was great god thank you so much you've blessed me so much whatever it is like god wants to hear it and he's your friend and i think a lot of people at asbury learn that too and so we wanted to tell other people you have a friend in god and he's gonna be there for you so yeah that's what i learned How amazing was that? Wow. A little bit of information for you two. While that was all happening, we were praying for you here. 
And um, so I texted Mac, I think only once during that time. And, um, you know, just said, I'm thinking of you and I want you to know we're praying for you. But both Sundays that that was happening, we were praying for you here too. And I could not stay off of YouTube. I was up all night long watching the revival, looking for my little Mackie Mac. I never did, I thought I saw you once, but I don't know that it was really you. Um, I think it was just my imagination. But I was so excited at what God was doing, and, and I was praying so hard for you that whatever it was that God had for you, that he was going to he was going to give to you. And it sounds to me like he did. And it's really made an impact on your life. So I, we, we are grateful that we were kind of a part of that, right? Yeah. That we get to be a part of that. And um, what an honor that you would say that you sense the Holy Spirit here in that same way. Because that's our desire, right? Yeah. That we want to just be in the presence of the Lord, that we want to be a church who, um, who seeks to be in God's presence and who really wants um, God to move in our lives. And we want to be changed people. We want to come to church and walk away changed people, right? Amen. That's our desire. So one thing that was not planned, I didn't know that Mac was going to come today. She texted me this week and said, I'm still in town with my parents. I have one, I leave, uh, you leave tomorrow? Tuesday. Tuesday. She's like, I want to come see you. Can I come to church on Sunday? I'm like, I guess. <laughs> I suppose. I was like, yes. Um, but we, we didn't know that this was going to happen. So last week, we, in our series, we've been speaking about, it's called Sizzlin' Summer Series. And we're talking about all different kinds of fire in the Bible, different um, elements like, um, like uh, Moses in the burning bush. We talked about being refined by the fire, being tried by fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. We've talked about all these different things. And last week we talked about Elijah up on the mountain calling down the fire of the Lord from heaven to burn up the sacrifice. And as a result, there was this revival and everybody turned back to God. And so now you're here this week and just God is working all the pieces together, isn't he? Just a good, good God, good Father, amen. Let's take a moment and pray for Colin right now. And then um, I, I think... Um, I'm not going to preach this message today. We're going to do something else after we pray for Colin. Let's pray. Father God, we are so truly grateful to be in your house this morning and to just sense your Holy Spirit moving in this place. We are grateful, Lord, for each and every person who is here today, and we believe that you have something for them. We believe that they're here for a reason, that you want to speak to their hearts and their minds, that you want to um, do a miracle in their lives. Father, I pray right now for Colin. Lord, you know every single one of his medical conditions. You know the dangers that, um, that are there, the risks that he's taking and flying to Hawaii. But Lord, this is something that he's always dreamed of, and, and you're making it happen for him. So Lord, we pray for safety. We pray that the, the medications and all the safety um, measures that have been taken place to get him there safely, they all work perfectly. And we pray that this would just be a vacation of a lifetime, that he would just enjoy every moment. We pray for, um, for TJ and John, that you would just give them wisdom and, and discernment to know how to handle his care the best way possible and uh, to get him there and back safely. Thank you for their willingness and their love for him to do this for him. We just pray blessings on, on the whole family as they travel together. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, the message is going away. We'll talk about it next week. Um, but I, I want to share another little story with you because um, I think it kind of goes along with what's been happening here. Um, I, I, I met someone this last year. Um, she came in to volunteer at our church um, in the office. And she's not a church member. She, I don't even know how she came to us. That's a whole other story. But uh, I found out I knew her daughter, and um, this person was volunteering, and, um, and uh, I said to Kendra, oh, she, she's going to become our ne next church member. And Kendra said, no, she's an atheist. She's not going to be a church member. That's not happening. And so I said, yeah, okay, whatever you say. Um, she's going to be a, one of our church members. 
And uh, so this person, she just kept working for us and working for us in the office. And um, I started to talk more and more to her. And I felt the Lord drawing me more and more to her. And uh, I really liked her. I, we had a lot in common. She's an artist and uh, just very crafty and not in an evil way, but in a good way. <laughs> she, um, uh, and the more I talked to her, the more she started opening up to me about why she's an atheist. And um, the reason that she uh, said she was an atheist was because of family members who were Christians. Have you ever heard that story before? It's a sad tale when you meet a Christian who makes you want to be an atheist. And I said, well, I hate to break this to you, but your sister is not really a Christian. Because if your sister were a Christian, you wouldn't have those feelings towards God. She's misrepresenting my God. Let me tell you who my God is. And I had the opportunity to share some things with her. And then Easter started to roll around, and I've developed now a friendship with this person. I liked, I liked her a lot. I looked forward to seeing her every day. She would come in and visit with me, and I just thought, I can't wait for that day where she's going to say, I accept the Lord. So Easter came around. She's never come to church. She didn't want to deal with that. No, nope, I'm not a Christian. Well, we were getting ready for the Passover on Thursday, and she was in the kitchen talking to me while we were getting ready, and she was asking a bunch of questions, and I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I said, well, why don't you come tonight and just see what it's all about? I mean, you don't, you don't have to be a Christian to come. Not everybody who comes to our church is a Christian. Half you guys are probably heathens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she showed up that night for the Passover, and she's like, this was really cool. And then she came the next night to the next meeting, and the next night to the next meeting, and then she came to church on Sunday. And I was like, oh! <laughs> and so since Easter, she'd been coming every week to church. She'd been sitting among you, not believing in God, just coming to church. And the whole time, the Lord's been softening her heart and God has been showing her who he really is. And he's been saying, no, Joe. This is who I really am. Come up here, Joe. So this is my friend Joe. She's going to stand up here while I talk. This is who I've been talking about. In case you didn't know, most of you did. But Joe has been uh, lied to by the enemy, saying, this is who God is. You don't want to love this God. He's not a good God. And by coming here and meeting you people who love God and express God's love in a genuine way, she told me, I said to her this week, I'm waiting for that week when I say, if you want to receive the Lord, raise your hand. And she came up to me at church today and she said, I'm ready for you to say that. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to hog all of the joy and the tears for myself. So are we all ready for me to ask the question? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone here? Oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Who would like to accept the Lord as their personal Savior? No! <laughs> Whoa! So excited. Welcome to the family. Thank you. Yeah, you can stand for her. She deserves that. Yeah. You know, let me just say something. BB, yeah. yeah, her dog BB said yes first. He was wearing a Salvation Army shirt the first day that I met him. <laughs> so, Joe, let me tell you something. You were a Christian before you were a Christian. Yep. Yeah. You were already living um, a godly life before you let God rule your life. Yep. And so this transition is, is seamless in that sense, but watch out. Okay. Because the devil is going to say, oh, no, you don't. 
right? Yeah. And he's going to bring trouble your way, and yep. he's going to try and convince you that you've made a wrong decision. But we're here. We're your family. We all have the shield of faith, and we've learned recently that when someone is attacked, what do we do? We surround them with our shield. Yep. So I want you guys to check on Joe this week. Make sure she's doing okay, because the enemy is going to come after her. Yep. But we're going to pray for her right now. Father, we are so, so grateful for Joe. We are grateful that we know her. We're grateful that she has opened her heart to you, Lord God, and has accepted that you are real and that you are the creator of the universe and that you created her and you love her. Father, we are so excited that she is a part of our family. And we are so grateful, Lord God, that she has accepted you as her personal savior. Father, as she turns her life over to you and confesses her sin and receives your forgiveness, I pray that you would just bring a peace in her life that passes all understanding, that she would just sense your Holy Spirit at work in her life like she never has before. Father, may we give her a warm welcome into your family and be a good representation of who you are. Let us be children that represent the Father well. Father, we love you and we are so grateful for this morning that we get to celebrate this with such a special person. Thank you for bringing her into our lives. Thank you, Lord God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's hear it for Joe. Okay. I just want to say one thing. Yeah, here. Since working here every day at the community center, these are the best people I've ever worked with, ever. And I've had a lot of jobs, and I've done a lot of things, and everybody here has been welcoming, and uh, I just love the church, and I love being here every day. I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't come here every day. So. We love you. That's the best day ever, right? When someone joins the family like that. Yeah, Sean. Got another one, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I love that. What? Is it possible? Oh, 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 I can't, we, we don't have that over here right now. Um, they kept singing it. Um, what is that song? Um, when I've come with my agenda. Oh, I can't even think of what it's called right now. But you guys sang it so many times. I cannot even count how many times that song was sung. Um, I apologize. I, I can't even remember what it was. It's a um, beautiful song, but I don't even remember what it's called, so I don't have the music, but yeah. Maybe next week. We'll do that next week. Well, right now, we're not done with the service. You guys have all kinds of ideas. We've got a whole revival starting here. We've got to sing. We've got to worship. So, with that being said, all of that, you see, you know, we, man has all these plans. But, you know, God said, you know, I, it's my church. I'll do what I want to do today. Um, it wasn't until, like, two days ago that I said to Mackenzie, would you like one of you, I said, open it to either one, would you like to speak? And she's like, yeah, I think I could say a few words. And I know she's shy, but I also know that she's a champion, what is that called, um, speaker that you do the, like, what's your, de kind of a debate, not debate, but business, DECA, DECA yeah. So she's a champion at that, too, so. She also has God on her side. She got the Holy Spirit on her side, so. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being obedient to God and doing that. And uh, Joe got, you know, she's like, I was waiting last week for you to say it, and you didn't. I was like, that's because God wanted you to do it this week. He had a plan. So, um, it, but I wanted to say, is there anyone else here who would like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior? If so, please raise your hand, and we will pray for you. Okay, all right. We will, leave, we will make that opportunity available often because we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to uh, join our family. Right, Ray? Thumbs up from Ray. Everything's good. <laughs> so what this means to you, my friends, is that for the first time, I think ever, in all of history, we're ending church early. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
So, with that being said, is there anybody who would like to share anything, any comments, questions, or concerns before we leave, or do you all need to go and just be in God's presence? I, I like pa it when you us up there to, to pray? Yeah, Pam. Are you just Yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's, do, let's have the worship team come up, and we're going to open the altar for prayer. And um, that's going to be our time of, of closing. What I'm going to say right now is the benediction, but we're going to pray and, um, and um, sing a song. And um, if you want to come to the altar and pray, I think that's a great opportunity. Maybe you want to pray with Joe and welcome her to the family. But uh, let's just open or close with a, a word of prayer. And, um, and then if you want to leave, you can leave. If you want to stay, you can stay. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house today. What a beautiful time that we've had worshiping you, Lord. And what a beautiful testimony um, from Kinsey. Thank you, Lord God, for that. Thank you for Joe's uh, boldness to accept you as our Savior. Um, Father, what a beautiful service today you've given us to just be in your presence. It's not, it's not about going and, and singing three songs and giving some announcements and praying for this person and saying a sermon and going, Lord, it's about just being in your presence and listening to your Holy Spirit. And I'm so grateful that you were here today moving in our midst. Father, as we sing this final song, I just pray that those who want to come and just spend some time with you at the altar, they would feel uh, free to do that. Lord, you are a good, good Father. And we just want to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good, good. Good father, Gavin.
It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. Love one another. Be good. And go get your kids. We don't want them.